Hi and welcome back to my channel. This is my July wrap up. So all the books I read in July. So I read 12 books in July, which is a little bit over average for, for me. Um, so let's just get into it, shall we? So the first books, let's start with my rereads because I had two rereads in July. It was the last two books in the Magnus Chase series. So we have uh, Magnus Chase and the Ship of the Dead and we have Magnus Chase and the Hammer of Thor, which is number two and number three. So this series is centered around Norse mythology and just like the other Rick Royden books I have been rereading this year, it is something I will get into at a later date. So as you may or may not know, I've been reading Marie Lou's Legend series this year and these two uh, are connected to that series. So we have Life Before Legend which is a short story novella which has two short stories, one from Day's point of view and one from June's point of view, which both take place before Legend starts. And then we have Rebel, which is a companion novel, which features Daniel, as we know as Day from the Legend series, and his brother Eden. It also takes place about 10 years after the Legend series ends. It's well written and it's a nice story, not necessarily one I needed to read after the Legend series but it was still nice to go back to those same characters and see them as a bit older than they are in the Legend series. And then for a series that I've been wanting to read for I don't know how long, uh, it's the Lunar Chronicle series. I started to read the first two books, uh, so I read Cinder and I read Scarlet. So I've only read the first two books so far, but from what I've been reading, this series is not disappointing at all, uh, which is good considering how long I've been wanting to read it. So we start with Cinder where, you guessed it, we follow a character named Cinder. Now, this is a Cinderella retelling, but with a twist. Cinder is a cyborg, so she is part human, part cyborg. In this world, this is apparently something you can have as an elected surgery, or if you need it, like in Cinder's case, she needed to have that surgery. So when Cinder was very young, she was in an accident and the only way to save her life was to turn her into part cyborg. Saying that, she doesn't actually remember her life from before the surgery, uh, only after waking up from it. So the world is very recognisable to the world we live in, but it's still very different. For one, the countries seem to be more like what we see as continents, but it does make it a lot easier to remember the areas. And then there's people living on the moon, or how they call it, Luna. So from what I can gather, a long, long time ago, humans colonised the moon. And since then, the Lunars, as they are called, uh, have evolved and gained certain mind control abilities. Uh, they use mostly glamours to change the way they look, but some actually use a lot of mind control. But not all Lunars are like this. There are those that are born without the ability and they are called shells. They also happen to be immune to the lunar glamour. And then we have Scarlet. So in this book we meet Scarlet or um, Little Red Riding Hood. We still continue on with Cinder's story in this book but we also have an added character of Scarlet and her story. And we also find out a lot more about this missing lunar princess that we hear about in the first book. So. All in all about this Lunar Chronicles is that 
I'm finding this fascinating. Uh, it's it's a fascinating retelling of the old stories and I cannot wait to read more of them. And then we have Girl Online Going Solo by Zoe Zug and this is the conclusion to the Girl Online series. So this whole series has been a very easygoing, happy, go-lucky thing and this book gave a very sweet conclusion to that whole series. So do I think these books were worth the hype that they had a couple of years ago? No, not at all. Uh, I wouldn't say it's a must read, uh, but it was a very easy read. So if you're just looking for an easy read book, there you go. It's also kind of cute. So, another Cinderella retelling because we cannot get enough of those, can we? We have Cinderella is Dead by Kayleen Bayron. Now, unlike the Lunar Chronicle books, uh, this one is actually set in a more fairy tale kind of universe. So, it's been 200 years since Cinderella found her Prince Charming. And since then, girls from all over the land has been forced to once a year go to this annual ball where if they are even chosen, uh, they are married off to mostly older men. So, you can guess that Women are treated quite horribly in this world. From when they're little, girls have been made to read and reread the Cinderella story as if it's a Bible, it's law. So in this book, we follow Sophia, who would much rather marry her friend Erin, who wouldn't want a knight in shining armour to rescue her, she would rather put on the armour herself and do the rescuing. So in the very depth of it, it's about women's rights. It's about standing up for yourself, for doing what's right. I could definitely see this as being very influential for younger teens uh, to... Winston! Winston! Naughty! I could definitely see this book as being quite influential for younger teens to get that kind of, that spark to, you know, stand up for yourself, to get the courage needed to do what's right. All in all, it was a very easy read and I quite enjoyed it. And I think I would definitely reread it again in the future. So lastly we have the four books that I read for the summer readathon for which there is a reading vlog which I will link up here and down below so you can check out more of that if you like. But as a summarization, I read A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. This is a YA thriller mystery kind of a book which I highly recommend you pick up if you haven't already and I definitely cannot wait to pick up the next book in the series. And next we have Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. Now I think this is classed as like a adult romance, new adult kind of a book, but I would rather class it as a YA LGBT plus kind of a book. I did quite enjoy her writing style, so I cannot wait to read more from her later. And then we have Kate and Clara's Curious Cornish Craft Shop by Ali McNamara. It's a cutesy magical realism romance kind of a book which is something I'm starting to feel is very classic uh, Ali McNamara, having read so many of her previous books by now. And very lastly, we have The Colour Purple by Alice Walker. Although this is fiction, it does remind you that people used to live like this and some people still do live like this in these kinds of conditions. It's not a book I think I will be rereading, at least not for a very long time, but I feel like it's been a very important book to have read. And that was it. That was all the books I read in July. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to do all the things and I shall see you all next time. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>